the cat walked into man's life several thousand years ago it came from the lands of its wild ancestors from the high mountains from the jungles from the great plains slowly and hesitantly it came to settle among us for us the cat has become a companion and a stranger an object of admiration and fear a symbol of beauty and mystery of angelic grace and demonic powers What is a cat? There is no one answer. A cat is an enigma, a riddle of hidden meanings, a paradox, a puzzle. And although cats have been domesticated, man has not tamed their wild spirit. Cats are skillful hunters instinctively, physically equipped to catch prey. With eyes set in front for tracking, with padded paws which are firm, sure and quiet. With sleek muscles designed for leaping and pouncing, and with retractable claws which they keep well sharpened. Cats hunt everywhere, for their prey belongs to the air, the land, and the water. hunting instinct goes so deep that they keep in practice by hunting anything, real or imagined. Cats climb trees to hunt, to rest, to escape, or just to feel secure. Cats are defenders. of their territory they're possessing, always alert to danger, of their young they're fiercely protective. Cats not only shelter their kittens from all intruders, but train them well to go out to meet the world. Cats are clean in all their personal habits. Cats play for the pleasure of it in every field and around every corner. A patch of grass to hide in or to eat. Something to rub against or roll on. Whether it's a warm spot to sun in or a quiet walk, cats make the most trivial things a source of delight. Cats love freedom and solitude and just to be alive. And in one life or nine, the cat has always stirred our imaginations. Self-contained, aloof, wary. He's the source of a lively stream of myths, legends, and superstitions. Those eyes that dilate at night and shine in the dark, are they the eyes of a feline monster that demands human sacrifice? Or are they the eyes of an enchanting moon goddess? Cats have been either worshipped or scorned, admired or feared. From the beginning, they have provoked man's deepest emotions. 
Approximately 5,000 years ago, wild cats from the northern part of Africa wandered into the Nile Valley and were domesticated. They looked very much like today's Abyssinian cats. At first, the Egyptians used these cats to guard granaries. Later, they were also trained to retrieve. Bastet, goddess of life, fertility, and happiness, had the body of a woman and the head of a cat. The temple of Bastet preserved the mummies of tens of thousands of cats. They were regarded as religious symbols, worshipped for their beauty and grace. Cats were honored as the companions of goddesses in other pagan religions too. But the adoration the cat received in ancient times only led to a death sentence in the Middle Ages. As the medieval cult of the Norse goddess Freya spread, cats became identified with witchcraft, Satan, and evil, and witches were thought to assume the form of black cats. The church, determined to snuff out sorcery, hunted them down. Ownership of a cat was punished by death. And though we may be far from the Dark Ages now, the world is still sprinkled with people who are superstitious about cats, particularly black ones. The next step was again inevitable for the paradoxical cat. He became a hero. The Great Plague swept over Europe, destroying hordes of people. Cats killed the disease-carrying rats and began to be valued again. Since the last century, hardly a home in Europe has been without a cat. They have assumed their rightful place in our households. More than useful mousers, they are companions, friends, members of the family. It is the nature of the cat that allows him to adapt to our world and bask in the warmth of our affections. The romance between cat and man takes many forms. We are kindred enough for a cat to love, to appreciate, and yet alien enough for a cat to ignore. But when he wants our attention, he is insistent, persistent, demanding. The cat will try to con man out of almost anything. He demands an equal place in the family and lets us know his desires. As demanding and persistent as he may be, the cat can change his mind in an instant. His personality is a contrary mixture of dependence and self-sufficiency. He may trade on a bit of his independence, for he would rather lean on us than fend entirely for himself. He likes the special foods we feed him, foods we have developed to meet all his nutritional needs. He'll accept our home as a safe domain. We give him a place to sleep. Litter boxes, scratching posts in place of trees, and toys in place of prey. Indoors, the cat lives in an imaginative world with tree-like objects to climb upon and scamper in caves to hide in and explore. Every object may become a challenge to his curiosity, a conquest, an adventure. And there are endless perches from which to make and watch the fascinating world of fun, danger, threat, and pleasure.
Unlikely as it seems, cats often make friends with dogs, sometimes with complete trust and comfort. Cats befriend other animals too, even their natural prey. But their best friends and bitterest enemies are other cats. They speak to each other in secret dialects. Their games have rules known only to themselves, discussed at length at outlandish hours over backyard fences. Hidden in the night, they bring out their secret lives, their loyalties, jealousies, affections, and hatreds, which we can never hope to see. Though we may think we own him, we'll never be the center of the cat's world. He remains a free spirit. His complex personality, tuned by instinct, tempered by adaptability, resists definition. Loyal and fickle, dignified and comical, sassy and demure, take any adjective and you'll find a cat lurking behind it. To understand the cat, we must accept him and cherish him on his own terms, as an animal, half friend, half mystery. Thank you.